And good afternoon. Uh, this is Joanne with the Carry Dog Information Systems, and our webinar today is on QuickBooks Point of Sale version 19. And I want to welcome all of you. We will be getting started here in just a moment. Um, I would like to invite uh, any of you who are joining us today to, uh, if you have a question about anything that I'm presenting, if the, uh, please feel free to unmute yourself and to uh, ask your question. And we definitely would love to get those taken care of before we move any further. So um, I'd like to introduce a little bit about a QuickBooks Point of Sale. Uh, the system has been around for about 20 years and Big Hairy Dog has been supporting the system. We actually support a couple of different uh, point of sale and inventory management systems. And this is uh, one of our premier systems. We, um, Big Hairy Dog has been supporting retail customers now for 28 years. We've been uh, celebrating our 28th anniversary this year. Um, if you are on our mailing list, please check your emails for our 28th anniversary specials. Um, we'll a little bit of introduction too about Big Hairy Dog. As I mentioned, we are a small company. We're located up in Northern California. Um, we are, we do work with companies, uh, QuickBooks customers all over the United States, about 90,000 users. Um, are using this system across this, uh, the U.S. It is a U.S.-based uh, and uh, um, American currency-based program. It's also a Windows-based program. It is a software that you download, which you actually own. Uh, there's no monthly fees associated with it. Uh, it's not living out there in the wild, wild web. Um, it has a lot of opportunities to uh, to uh, grow with the system if you have a small store and are growing and adding workstations or adding lo uh, locations this system will grow with you as well the carry dog offers probably one of the most comprehensive training and, and support programs in the united states we uh, specialize primarily in training and supporting of our customers a lot of these systems you can purchase from uh, other areas and other other dealers but we found that there was a shortage of training People make a huge investment in the, uh, a lot of times in these systems, um, and it's important for them to be able to use them and get the best return on their investment. When you come on board with Big Carry Dog, you will be assigned a dedicated trainer, and that trainer will take you from the very basics of the system all the way through the full implementation of the reports and the inventory management. What we'll be starting with today is we'll be going through the steps um, the basic steps of what the trainers would be taking you through as far as getting your system set up. We'll uh, make a sale, we'll track our customers, and then we'll take a look at it report. So we'll go ahead and get started here. Um, so generally speaking, um, this system is very simple to use. You can see from the layout of the, the main page that everything is, is very uh, pretty much self-explanatory. Um, I do have a lot of customers who are nonprofits who use this system and a lot of their sales associates are uh, um, elderly uh, retired uh, associate people and sometimes have a difficulty using computers or uh, or following through the the system and um, i'm happy to report that, that this has um, made a big hit with uh, uh, several of my clients who uh, do have older uh, excuse me older associates who are very hesitant about getting involved with a computer and they find it very simple to use. So what we'll do here, um, as you see, as I pointed out, that you have uh, the simple sections. We've got our QuickBooks point, our point of sale uh, division here. In the center, we have our purchasing. We have our employee tracking. And over here on the right-hand side, we have our operations. Over on the left-hand side are our action buttons. And over on the right-hand side, far right, you can see we have the uh, the uh, notifications. Um, I am a big sticky note fan, so this is one of my favorites. But if you like a little more organized look, we um, you have the uh, you can stylize it a little bit more. But I'd like to point out that other than just notifications, this is a, an inventory reminder option too. So if you have any reminders that are due, and that would be um, items that have uh, gone below their reorder point, uh, any items that are uh, have experienced price changes and any new items, this little message will pop up and you'll be able to access that those reports directly from this window. I also like to keep the tech support information handy. 
That way, if any of the sales associates have any issues with the system at all or have any concerns, they're able to call Big Hairy Dog or to email us. Um, we do have a, a policy where we answer the phones for our customers. So we do have office hours seven days a week. Outside of office hours, we always have a tech available. So we basically have tech support available 24 seven. Monday through Friday, our regular hours are 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Pacific time, and on Saturdays, 9 to 5, and Sundays, 9 to 2. So we have regular hours seven days a week and, uh, and full tech support available 24-7. Um, this system, as I mentioned, is a Windows-based system. It can run on a Windows-based tablet. Uh, you can use it on a laptop, or you can use it on a tower. A lot of my customers are using this on an all-in-one because it has a smaller footprint and um, the, they like the touch screen option. You can minimize the, uh, the notes here. You can always open them up if, um, if you need any of that information, but you can minimize it. If you're using a smaller screen, um, this maximizes the viewing screen. So what we'll do start, we'll start with our department list. And what we're gonna be doing is building our foundation toward our reports. Because not only, as I mentioned, is this a point of sale system, but it's also a very robust inventory management system. And if you're comparing this to uh, cloud-based systems, for example, um, that most of them do not have the depth and the, the robustness in the reporting end of it. Um, and some of the components that we'll be reviewing today, those would be con considered extra components to, uh, to uh, a lot, or if not all of the, the cloud-based systems. For example, your customer loyalty information is uh, included in QuickBooks Point of Sale. Your employee tracking is included. And of course, all of your reports are included. It also includes a link to a QuickBooks financial package. It does integrate with all of the QuickBooks financials, including the online version. So if you're using QuickBooks for your accounting, you'll be able to integrate your your point of sale with your current accounting system. So, and as I said, please don't hesitate to reach out with any questions. Um, you can unmute yourself and ask, or you can um, send me a chat. So where we normally start would be with our department list. So let's take a look at that right now. And you can um, virtually have as many departments as you want. We do recommend that you stick to around 20 that way, the information that's filtering over to your reports is not going to be too diluted. What's included in your departments is uh, your department code. You can see here in the center uh, under details. Um, this is an optional code. You, it uh, can be alpha or numeric. Um, you can have it show on your, your inventory tags if you wanted to. So it depends on, on how you want to track your, uh, your departments. Um, whether to set it up with a code or not, a lot of these things are going to be questions that you can work with your, your trainer on because you, the flow of your business is going to determine what would be the best angle for you. Um, in this situation for our uh, casual wear women, so we have our casual wear department. We have women, you see, we also have our casual men, uh, plus sizes, girls and boys. So you can break down your departments um, like that so that they're similar, but um, they're, they may or may not have different pricing or different percentages. Um, you also have a tax code in the department. This is where the taxes are, are um, applied. Um, you could have this set up as a non-tax item. Um, the, uh, I know that different areas have different tax codes. And again, that would be something that you would work with the trainer to determine uh, how to set up your taxes. Um, and this is probably the most important part here, the margin and the markup. And let's just take a look at that a little bit closer here. Um, the margin is, and I'm sure you're, most of you are familiar with, that is, that's the percentage that you're gonna be earning of over the, the cost of your items. And we'll see how this comes into play a little bit more when we get to the items. But um, if you're looking at a margin of 65%, then you're looking at a markup of 186%. If this changes, say we make it uh, 70%, then that's going to give you the, the markup information, the markup amount, a markup your your products in order to get 
that uh, that percentage of margin. And again, like I said, we'll see this um, come into play again when we when we look at the the item list. So from this system, no matter where you are in the system, you'll always be able to pop back to the home button. And if you are working on a list, uh, one of your lists, and you have a customer come in to make a sale, you can always pop back, make your sale, and then go back to the, the previous list that you were just working on. So our next uh, step and building block toward our inventory management and our reports is going to be our vendor list. And again, you can have virtually as many vendors as you need. Um, over here in the details uh, you see for Grace in LA, we have our contact information, address, uh, zip code phone number. Um, we have email address. This system does integrate with Outlook, your Outlook account. So you can email your customers, your vendors directly from the system. Um, it also inter uh, interacts with constant contact. So if you're sending out flyers and uh, announcements for sales or special uh, special items, um, the system will integrate directly with your constant contact account as well. Over here in the vendor details, you see we have history. Now this is everything that you have purchased or returned to this vendor. If you have a recurring purchase order and you wanna duplicate a, a purchase order that's already been uh, previously turned in, then you would just you can just access that particular purchase order and duplicate it from there. So all of their history uh, lives here. Any vendor notes you want you might want to make um, about this vendor, maybe when to order, um, specifically what you order from them, that can be listed in here. You also have multiple custom fields. Uh, maybe you want to put a website in here or a referral source. Um, again, that would be something you would work with your trainer to establish um, if you were going to use the, the custom fields or or how you would use them. Just so you know that all of this information in the white and gray area is all reportable. So you can pull this information up in your reports as well. And let's go back to our main page. So we've looked at our department list. We've looked at our vendor list. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our item list. And there's several things I'd like to point out about our item list here. First of all, it's downloadable. So you can export all of this information into a spreadsheet if you need to use it outside the system. Um, you can add or remove columns as necessary. Uh, in this case, I have it set up for a multi-store environment. So I've got my headquarters and my New York location listed in here. So I can see the inventory I have for each item in both locations. I can see my quantity on hand. I can see my available quantity. And I can see any items that I might have on order. As I said, this is customizable, so we can add or remove. And um, all of these options, all of these columns are, are options. Uh, here we have our custom fields, so you see you can even uh, track your items by custom fields as well. Uh, you can set reorder points for the items. We can move that over here. So we know what our reorder point is for any given item. We can sort by each column. We can search items by name or by item number. And let's take a look at, let's see, for example. So this is, um, this is an example of the details for your items. You can see you have your basic information here, uh, whether it's an inventory or non-inventory item, the department, the description, the size, and the, the, the price that we're charging. Over here, we've got the vendor information. The system assigns a unique barcode to each item uh, and that uh, and we we normally recommend using that number uh, when tagging your items just because it it keeps um, folks from other organizations or other stores from returning items that they purchased elsewhere that may be a similar or the same item 
So they would have to have that unique item to scan up in your system. Uh, you can assign an alternate lookup. Um, this system does support multiple units of measure. So if you're buying in bulk but you're selling it individually, it can help you track your costs as well as your individual sales. Um, these are, uh, there's five custom fields in your items. And uh, you can, as you see, I've got a couple that I've populated here and hyperlink and, and shelf location. What you'll also see in the item information and the detail is the history of this item. So from the time you purchased this item, uh, any cost adjustments you might have made, any sales you made, when this item sold, who it sold to, and when it sold. That information is all available right within your item information. And you can see we have it here. If we needed to reprint this, this information, we could do so. So um, we're going to add an item here. And let's call it uh, <clears throat> women's spring dress. As we're getting ready for the, uh, this, the spring season, we can assign a picture to the item. Very simple process. Um, we can go in as um, and as I mentioned, there's different options as far as inventory. You can have non-inventory items, service. You can actually assemble, do assemblies in groups uh, with the system as well. So we'll check uh, our department. Let's do our casual wear women. Uh, you can put a description in here. We're going to go pop over here to the vendor. Um, end of cascade. Let's say this item costs us seventeen dollars. And we want to set a reorder point of five for this item. So when this item gets down to five, uh, we'll be at our reorder point and a mess that it will repair on that report that we saw at the beginning of the presentation. Uh, we could assign our alternate lookup information here. An alternate lookup can be al alpha and numeric. Um, if we want to track the UPC information, you can um, provide that can be provided here. Um, and here's the uh, where you would enter the base unit of measure. In this case, we're just going to measure uh, in, indicate it's each. The system also has an integrated payments option for credit cards. Um, if you are using their integrated credit card processor, you have a uh, a new feature that is um, it's a pretty handy handy tool. It's called the Go Payment Sync, and um, you would indicate uh, whether this item is going to be synced to that that Go Payment. And basically, what it is, it's a, a mobile app that you can download onto any device. Um, it's similar. To, a lot of people are familiar with Square. It's very similar to Square, where you're you're uh, taking a credit card for a payment for an item. The difference between it this and square is that first of all it's less expensive and the other uh, the other uh, feature is that it does integrate with your point of sale so if you're doing a pop-up or a trunk show or a trade show off-site you can sell your items you can sync it back to the point of sale and your inventory and your sales will be adjusted from that sync it's it's really a great little tool this program also has a a connection with e-commerce. So uh, we have partnered with a company called Webgility who have built a link between QuickBooks Point of Sale and eight shopping cart platforms, uh, Shopify, uh, Amazon, Etsy, just to give you an example. Um, and the onboarding for your website with this system is included with the, the price of your software. Um, if we were going to designate this item to our e-commerce, if I had this connected to an, an e-commerce site, I could select e-commerce, and then I could list the store. If I have multiple stores, I could list the stores that uh, that this particular item would be sent to. Over here in the miscellaneous and shipping, um, we have indicated that we will print tags for this item. Um, our, we can set it up so that we track a, a serial number. Um, our staff can earn commissions on the sales and our customers can earn rewards because there is a rewards program that is built into the system. 
The system also integrates with UPS, USPS, and FedEx. So um, you can, if you populate this information here, you can actually create a shipping label right from the point of sale system. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to do some population here. So we'll make start with a size small for now. And let's call it cream uh, flour. And our price here is 17. So we'll put our cost there. And you can see the system will populate a price based on the margin and the markup that we set up in the department. If you wanted to, at this point, you could change this information. If you were entering this item initially, you could enter your quantity on hand. Um, but we're going to go through the, the process of ordering a new item just so you can see the, the trail of how to follow uh, the, the status of your items. This system also comes with a, a built-in style matrix. Um, that way, if you're selling this item in different sizes and different colors, that you don't have to go in and enter each item individually. You can save your templates if you're going to be using them over and over again. And we'll take a look at that right now. So we'll go ahead and save all this information. And if we want to, we can pull up a template that we have already created. And this one's a little bit different here. So this should be the sizes here. So let's go ahead and we're going to fix this one. And we'll do this in flour cream. We'll do it in flour. And we'll do it in flour blue. So we're going to populate this grid. And that's going to indicate to the system that we're going to carry this item in these three colors and these three sizes. And even though we don't have any in hand, we're going to populate it by just um, populating the zero um, so the system knows to to assign an item number to each one of these combinations. So once we save that, we can look over here on our item list and we can see our women's spring dress. And we'll open that up a little bit. And you can see we have it in, um, let's, there we go, in cream, in small, medium, and large, in pink, in small, medium, and large, and blue, in small, medium, and large. We currently don't have any on hand and none on order. So now the simple, the simplest way to, um, to add or to purchase items is just to go in with the system. We're going to highlight all of the items we just created. We're going to select order items, and the system's going to automatically pop, populate a purchase order for us. Now I know a lot of the online vendors, you do not, you're not required to provide collateral. Um, what's nice about creating the purchase orders and going through this process is then you have a trail of your orders. You can see what you ordered and when you ordered it and how many you ordered. And there's a couple of different places in the system where you can check this information. Um, since we had set up the, um, the reorder point for this item at five, let's go ahead and order 10 of each item. And we uh, pull up our vendor here. So let's pull up Cascade. And over here, um, we have a total of the, um, of the status of the purchase order. Any instructions we want to send, if we're going to send this to our vendor, we can populate here. Up here in the uh, upper right-hand corner, we've got our order date. We can select our delivery date. And if you're looking at a multi-store uh, operation, you can order this from your headquarters store, but you can have it delivered either to your headquarters or to one of your other stores. So we'll go ahead and, and as I mentioned, this does integrate with your Outlook account. So you would just, if you wanted to email this to your vendor, you could just select email. Your trainer would assist you in, in setting up your templates. So the body of your email uh, would reflect what you wanted to show, and then you would um, set that up and just email it to your vendor and you're ready to go. So we're going to save this. Now going back to our item list here, we can see that we still don't have any in hand. 
but we can see our on order list that we've ordered 10 of each of those items. So going back to our home page, we can see that um, in our purchasing section that it's indicating that we have open purchase orders. So all we need to do is just select that option, view our purchase orders. Now we can look at um, a variety of different ways. We can look at all purchase orders and we can sort them by the status. Uh, we can drill it down to days or weeks, or we can just look at the open, the open purchase orders. So let's see, it looks like this is our purchase order that we just created. So let's go ahead and receive these items. Now the, our purchase order automatically becomes a receiving voucher. So we don't have to create a new form or go anywhere else to, to pull up the information. We can just create it from that purchase order. We can um, add or remove columns in um, both our purchase order and our receiving voucher, depending on the information we wanna see in there. Open this up a little bit. And um, if we wanted, uh, if we were tracking UPC information, alternate lookup, we can um, do uh, pricing. Uh, so it just depends on you know what you wanna see within your forms. And as you see, it's very simple to, to add or remove forms. It's very simple to resize. It's easy to move the columns if you'd like to see them in a different order. So now we've got um, we've got our receiving voucher here. We want to see our item name there. Um, we can go through and inventory our our shipment and see if we if what we ordered matches what we received. If for some reason you receive fewer items than what you had ordered, uh, we can reduce the number that we received. We're gonna see that we ordered, the quantity we ordered was 10, that the quantity uh, we received was eight, and then the difference is two. So we're still gonna be waiting for two items for this item, for this, uh, this dress. And this purchase order will stay open until either we receive those two items or we cancel the purchase order. So once we inventory this, our order and we're ready to, uh, to stock the items, we can go in and actually we can print tags right from the receiving voucher, save another step. And let's take a look at a sample of what you might, might set up for your tags. So we have, um, we have the name of our shop here. We've got the name of the item, whatever description we want in there, the pricing of the item. Um, now you can add or remove, um, Per, uh, sections of this. So if you didn't want to see the UPC, you could eliminate that. Um, as I said, with all of your templates, that's something that your trainer will assist you in setting up to making sure that your tags and your receipt, your receipts, and all of your other documents are um, what you want to reflect to your customers. In this case, I've got uh, a printed a date and time. So if I have older items that I want to sell first, I can actually tell by the tag which ones I want to put out first. Of course, we have our color here, and this is the barcode um, and the item number that the system creates and uh, puts out the barcode. So now we can scan this, we can tag this and scan these items at the register. So we'll save that. So now if we go back to our item list and look up our spring dress, We can now see that we have uh, 10 on hand, except for the ones that we um, are still waiting for two of the items to show up. Um, we have 10 quantity on hand, 10 available to sell, and then we're still waiting. We have two left on order. And your differences between on hand quantity and available quantity, you can also create sales orders, layaways, and work orders in the system. So if you have an item that's committed to a sales order or a work order or a layaway, that um, that's gonna reduce that uh, number in your available quantity, but it's still gonna show on hand because you haven't, it hasn't left the store yet. So if we bounce back to our homepage, now the fun part, now we can make a sale. And um, I'd like to point out a couple things because normally we, we like to brag about this being a seven second sale. But 
I talk too long. So it goes a little longer than seven seconds. But there are some cool features that are um, available in the sales receipt. One of them I'd like to point out is the Quick Pick group. Um, this is really convenient if you're offering services, design services, alteration services, um, items that are too small to tag, or items that might be too big uh, for customers to bring up to the counter. It might also be display items, for example, um, items that you have you know, on, on the mannequins that the customers can't remove. You could have them listed in here under your display. You can have uh, shipping options, delivery options, um, basically whatever, whatever works best for you. But what's really nice is if you open, let's go ahead and open our kayaks and canoes, because obviously that's going to be an item that's going to be difficult to bring up to the counter. And we can add items to these lists. And so we've added a, a kayak in our list. And so in order to sell that, all the sales associate has to do is select it, and it populates in your sales receipt. We can go ahead and um, I, uh, I don't have a scanner associated with this, uh, you know, connected to this system. But if I scan did, I'd just scan the item and the barcode and it would pull up the item. But let's go ahead and, and search for our spring dress. All right. And so we can select, select one of the items. We can go in and select a few more items depending on what we want, want to purchase here. Now within the system, we've got our, our, uh, our sales items on our receipt. We can pull up our clients and we can search our customers by name, first name, last name, or phone number. So if we take a look here. So we'll go ahead and select Stephanie. So Stephanie's contact information comes up in, within the receipt. So we can verify that with the customer. We can also see that Stephanie is a part of our reward system. And Stephanie has $165.05 to purchase before her next reward. So that's a good opportunity for the sales associate to sell up to the customer. We see we have her phone number, her email address, and her history. Um, her last uh, purchase with us, you can see, was in July. If we need to go in and make any uh, adjustments or um, update any information in Stephanie's file, we can write from the receipt and we can open her information, and we can make whatever adjustments we need to make, adding address, adding phone numbers. Um, over here on the right-hand side, you see the history. So um, in addition to our vendors and our items, our customer's history lives in each one of their accounts. And all of this information can be pulled up. Everything that this customer has purchased or returned is going to show up in their history. Again, you've got custom fields. I have uh, created birthday list and marketing list. Um, if you send your customers uh, birthday cards or something, um, you can actually pull up a report uh, of their birthday, sort it, and then uh, reach out to the customers uh, that uh, are you know, going to be having their birthday. And if you have a coupon or a special sale item or a discount that you offer on their birthdays, you can, uh, you can populate that. We al I also have marketing source. Um, if you wanted to track your customers. And again, whatever you put in here is trackable, so you'll be able to pull it up in a report. Um, here we have uh, Stephanie's rating as a customer, and we also have her rewards status uh, here in, the, in her file. Um, the system also allows you to create different customer types. Uh, these are the ones that, that I have created, but you might create uh, separate ones on your own. Again, that would be something to work with your, uh, your trainer on and to set up. Um, you can also assign discounts. So if Stephanie's, uh, you know, a, a great rated, maybe it, we'll call her a VIP, um, although it looks like she has some, some purchasing to do to be a VIP, but we can also assign a discount within her file. So whether we want to give her a 5 or 10% discount, we can do that. We can also use a mark, a, a price level for this customer. With the price levels, um, again, these are uh, ones that I've set up, uh, but you can set up any. There's five options for price level. So if she's a VIP customer or maybe she's an employee. <clears throat> and we can select her as an employee. 
then whatever discount we assigned to that uh, to that uh, price level then will be reflected every time Stephanie comes in to the store. Any questions on any of this so far? Great. All right, well, we'll go ahead and uh, move out of Stephanie's file here. So um, you can also, within the system, create a house account and set a, a credit limit for, the, um, for your customers. And as I mentioned, it does integrate with the QuickBooks financial uh, packages. So you can send that information and uh, to, to your financials and do your billing from there. Um, so that is an option within the system as well. Within your receipt, you can add notes. And save that, and that will populate inside the receipt. You can convert any, any sales receipt into a, a layaway, a sales order, or a work order. Um, you can change the price level on the entire receipt. You can add discounts for individual items, you see here. And again, this would depend on the, the permissions that you give your sales staff. So if, um, if they have permission to give discounts, then they can offer those discounts. If they don't, um, then they, they would be prevented from accessing information that you as the business owner would prefer that they not see. You can also give discounts on the entire order based on a percentage or a dollar amount. And you can also add shipping. As I mentioned, it has the, the shipping integration with the, the UPS, uh, the Postal Service, and FedEx. So we are ready. Uh, Stephanie's ready to check out here. And she has a total of $13.85. Maybe she's decided that she doesn't want the uh, kayak, so we can go ahead and remove that. So that brings her total down to $148.37. And she may want to pay with... Uh, with a variety of tenders. So let's say she's going to pay $50 in cash. And with, a, um, with the integrated system, with the integrated credit cards, uh, when you take a credit card payment, then you're not going to have a standalone credit card machine that you're going to have to enter the amount into. Um, this saves time and money. We all know that it's easy to transpose a number. So this information will all be uh, it's just the customer putting the card in. There's now the touchless option for the credit card process and the credit card reader. So you've got your, your Apple Pay, your Samsung Pay, Google, and of course the tap. So we have those options now with the integrated credit card processor. So we're going to go ahead and select a, 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 um, her MasterCard here. So we show her tender down here. So now uh, we can actually email this directly to the customer without printing up a receipt. So let's take a look at uh, the, the option for the receipts. So this is an example of what one of your receipts might look like. So we have uh, store information, uh, the sales receipt number. You can um, set up which workstation it was, it was uh, produced on. We've got your store information here. Um, you can have your cashiers. A name on the on the ticket. Um, you have the bulk, the body of your your receipt here, showing the items, the number of items purchased, or your sales tax, and then your tender. So it breaks your tender down. So she paid fifty dollars in cash and ninety eight thirty seven with her credit card. You can add rewards information on here. So she needs to spend ninety dollars and forty nine cents more on eligible items to earn her five percent, and of course whatever message is. You can also add a coupon or any other information down here below. So that's our seven second sale. You can see that it's a very simple process. Um, it takes a little longer when you talk through it, but um, it should be a very quick process. When the customer comes up with the item, your sales associate scans the item, pulls up the customer information, takes the, takes the payment, and then either prints up or emails the receipt to the customer, and the customer's on their way. So it's a very, very simple process. We're going back to the home page here. A couple of things I'd like to point out. So we have the, um, the customer loyalty program that, that we've mentioned. 
So that uh, is here in the rewards. Um, you can turn this on or off depending on if you're going to use it, but it does come with the system. Um, in my case, I have it set up for a $200 threshold. Um, the reward amount is 5% off. Um, the expiration, there's no expiration, but you might want to set it for a couple of weeks, and that way um, you can get the customer back into the store. Um, if you want to push it out past the, the re your return policy time, you can do that as well. <clears throat> you can have it so that it automatically enrolls all of your customers um, or prompt uh, when you have new customers or non-members coming into the, the store. And you can inform the cashier when the sales rewards are earned. There you go. go ahead. We made just a little change here. So we'll go ahead and save it. All right. So that's the rewards program. Um, let's take a look at um, briefly at our employee management down here. So you, uh, your employees can all clock in and clock out. You as a manager can check the uh, who's clocked in and who's out um, and your time clock history. And this is what you would pull up uh, for your payroll information. Uh, this is an example of an employee list. So I've got my employees here. Let's take a look at David. Um, you can give each one a login name. It's probably not a good idea to give them their name as the login, um, but uh, you can create a login name for them um, with all of their information. If you can track commissions, if you're paying your, your staff commissions, um, you can in, indicate whether they're hourly. And here you can assign the security group. And the security group is something that you would establish um, depending on, on, on uh, your preferences on that. Um, in my case, um, I think the basic, uh, the default is the owner, manager, assistant manager, um, and associate. And then you can add part-time, you can create a part-time or um, I had a customer that they had a purchasing person and all they wanted them to do was be able to access the purchasing information. You can even drill it down by individual name. Um, or if you have volunteers that work with you, you can set it up so that all they can do is ring up a sale and smile at your customer. Um, of course, you populate uh, the information, the contact information for your employee. Over here on the custom page, um, you can create seven custom fields again, uh, emergency contacts, birth dates, start dates, whatever you want to do on this. And then um, in your your date, your date stamp here, um, for example, if David came in late today, and you can time date stamp that. And then you have that information available uh, when you're pulling up your uh, your files for your uh, your your payroll. And just to take a look at the security options and permissions here, take a look at security. There's literally about four pages of these options of so you can really drill down and fine tune uh, what information you want all of your your employees and your uh, your staff to be able to to have access to. So that's the basic operation of QuickBooks Point of Sale. Um, what we'll look, take a look at next is the reports. Um, the reports are going to be um, how you track your business. You know, what what's selling, when se when is it selling, who is it selling to. All of that information is going to be available in your reports. And if um, if any of you are familiar with uh, QuickBooks Financials, um, they have this feature as well. But this is one of my favorite features of the system is the dashboard. And this is going to be a collection of reports and graphs that you as a, a business manager want to see on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, this can be uh, edited. You can add or remove reports depending on, you know, if, if one no longer works, you can remove it. Um, if you create a new report, you can add it back to the system. And then you have access to the full report. So this is our full report uh, for our sales for today. And we can add or remove columns. So we can modify all of these reports and add any columns that um, are not currently in the, in the listing. 
We can um, change the filter, so filter the data to the item type, item name. You can see the different options that you have here. And of course, your custom fields are in there as well. So you can pull those that information up in your in your filter. You can also mod when you modify these reports, you can save them. So if we wanted to mod uh, memorize this report, we could change the name and call it Thursday's report. And we could save this report. And then we, we would find this report again. If we go to back to our all reports, we go back to our memories, memorized report. And there's our Thursday report. We can also move it over to our dashboard. Very simple process. And it's going to can move it up here to right in front of Wednesday's report. And we can save this. And now we've added that report to our dashboard. <clears throat> so in our reports, um, these are the categories of reports here. So we have our sales reports. Um, you have your inventory sold by channels. And that's going to show you where your items are selling in your store from your mobile device or from your e-commerce. Um, you also have your summaries, your department summaries, your item summaries, um, your mobile sales are pulled out and sales detail. Um, you have your graphs here where you can do your merchandise sold over time. And let's see, there's some other options down here. So tr uh, tracking your taxes for your sales, for your sales tax report, um, and any ship in your shipping summary. For your cash flow report, you have your X out and Z out. You can track in your payments. You can do payment summary. You can track your gift certificates, your gift cards. Uh, with your customers, you can pull up a demographic graph. Um, you can track by, by zip code. You can track the orders if you have layaways or sales orders open. And of course, you have your rewards program. With your items, um, you have your item summary. Um, you have uh, you can look at your quick pick list to see oh you know what items are currently assigned um, your valuation so what is the valuation of your uh, of your inventory and what your turn how's your how's your inventory turn uh, tracking your mobile sale items um, you, if you're in a multi store environment you can check the store inventory for all of your stores and any adjustments you can pull up any price adjustments. Um, Inventory adjustments will, will pull up in your, your, um, in your reports here. And any transfers, this has to do primarily with your multiple store option. Um, if you're transferring items from one store to another, um, you can track all of that information. With purchasing, of course, you can track uh, all of your purchasing in summary or detail. Uh, your employees, you do have a tip option in QuickBooks Point of Sale. If, the, uh, if your, your staff receives tips and you can pull up that detail and that can be recorded also in the sales receipt. Um, with your time reports here for your payroll and then pulling up your list. All of these reports, as I mentioned earlier, can be exported into an Excel spreadsheet. So if you're working with an independent accountant, um, you can actually deliver the information to them in a spreadsheet. Um, electronically, they can pull up the information and do, uh, do what they need to do. So my friends, that is QuickBooks Point of Sale in a nutshell. And we uh, have some great promotions running right now for uh, the month of February, as well as our anniversary, our 28th anniversary. So if you haven't received those emails, um, we, uh, we definitely would love to, uh, to go through the details with you. Um, if you have any questions following the webinar, please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, we will uh, send you a, a note uh, thanking you for attending today. Um, and perhaps setting up some one-on-one -on -one time. Uh, so hopefully you have a wonderful day and um, do well with the business and hopefully everybody is opening up a little bit more and uh, things are starting to flow. I think people are ready for that. And uh, Big Harry Dog would love to work with you and assist you with your point of sale search as well as supporting you as a, a point of sale customer. Thank you everyone and I look forward to speaking with you again.